We all know how rapidly the world is changing and how our technology and computing powers are improving exponentially. With more and more people deciding to dedicate their lives to the field of AI, it comes as no surprise that it has become one of the fastest growing and most competitive fields in the world. Today, we're talking about possible future events such as the singularity, which is a point in time when we would create super intelligences that greatly surpass the performance of the best human minds in virtually all domains of interest and our world would be so radically transformed that virtual reality becomes indistinguishable from reality but these ideas innovations and advancements are not without doubt or fear especially in a field like ai there are many people who fear that if artificial intelligences can outperform every human mind what control will we have over them and what need will they have for us let's try to answer some of these questions by understanding a concept first introduced in 1944 that is behind many of the innovations in artificial intelligence today game theory the first thing to note about game theory is that the word game in game theory does not refer to the common meaning that everyone associates with the word here game refers to any interaction between two or more players this could be an actual game like chess or poker or it could be a social interaction a political situation etc simply put game theory is the study of mathematical models of strategic interactions between two or more rational decision making players the word rational here means that every player knows that all the other players are just as rational and hold the same level of understanding and knowledge and that the players are selfish and will always act in self-interest preferring the higher reward for themselves let's move on to one of the fundamental concepts in game theory the nash equilibrium the nash equilibrium is a point in any game where none of the players would have an advantage in changing their current strategy it can be thought of as a no regret situation in the sense that at nash equilibrium the players will have no regrets about the decisions they made Let's understand this using the most well-known example of game theory, the prisoner's dilemma. In this game, we have two prisoners, player A and B, who were caught for the same crime and are held in two different interrogation rooms. They've been given two choices: stay silent or confess to the crime. If both of them remain silent, both of them get imprisonment for 1 year. If either one of them confesses, the confessor walks free. and the other prisoner gets 10 years of imprisonment if both of them confess both of them receive imprisonment for 5 years so logically the best option is for both of them to remain silent right that way they both get the least jail time it's obvious but the dilemma comes in because neither prisoner is aware of what the other prisoner chose and they have no reason to trust each other so instead the thought process to reach the nash equilibrium goes like this In the case where player B confesses, player A's best choice is to confess as well. This will lead to lesser punishment of 5 years rather than 10. In the case where B stays silent, A is still better off confessing as he will be a free man rather than facing a 1 year imprisonment if he also stays silent. In either case, A's best option is to confess. Since they are both rational players, B will go through the exact same thought process and reach the same conclusion. Therefore, in this case, the Nash equilibrium is reached when both prisoners betray each other and choose to confess. It's important to note that just because the players are at equilibrium, it does not mean that the solution results in the best possible outcome. In any game, there might be other solutions that result in a better payoff for some or all of the players, but reaching these solutions isn't possible because of some constraints. Okay, now you have a basic understanding of game theory. But what does this have to do with artificial intelligence? Game theory is implemented in artificial intelligence to make better and more strategic decisions. The core implementation of game theory lies in imperfect information games, which are games in which the other player's moves are hidden. Real-world issues often fall under this category. Till date, machine learning and deep learning techniques have had very limited success when it comes to imperfect information games. Let's take poker as an example since it is considered as one of the biggest challenges to AI and is used as a benchmark. 
Poker has 10 to the exponent of 161 different possible states in the game. That is a huge number and trying to tackle it using machine learning would take forever. But an AI program called Liberatus has outperformed any previous methods so far and has defeated world champions in over 20,000 hands of poker. It does not use any machine learning whatsoever. Liberatus uses game theory. Game theory is also applicable in many areas indirectly. Take Google Maps as an example. If we consider all of Google Maps as a game, then all the people on the road using it are the players. When you tell the app that you want to go from point A to point B, based on what the other players in the game are doing, it recommends the best possible route that you could take. And it does this for everyone. So in a way, it is nudging all the players towards a Nash equilibrium, where all the players get the optimal solution. Game theory is also being used to create AIs to tackle real-world problems such as public safety, wildlife conservation, public health, etc. So if it's all well and good, and it's benefiting everyone, what's the problem? Well, before we can get to that, there is one more concept we need to tackle. A very close relative of game theory, decision theory. Decision theory is the study of how a player can maximize his or her expected outcome in situations where there are no other decision-making players. It is more statistical than mathematical. Overall, decision theory provides a powerful tool with which to analyze scenarios in which a decision must be made without the interaction part of game theory. It's about a decision, not the game. There are several different decision theories in the world. Causal decision theory is the most commonly known one and it results in decisions very similar to that in game theory. It is considered the academically standard theory. But there are many other a-causal decision theories out there such as the timeless decision theory, logical decision theory, evidential decision theory, updateless decision theory, etc. Each of these have their own merits and arguments, follow different rules and result in different outcomes when applied to the same situations. For example, two players that are running a logical decision theory can achieve mutual cooperation in a prisoner's dilemma, even if there is no outside force mandating cooperation. It is the existence of these and the possibility that they will be followed that gives rise to our next and most concerning topic. When we talk about the dangers of AI, most people imagine evil AIs that are conscious and want destruction for no reason. But that doesn't need to happen at all. Being far more powerful than any human or human institution, a super intelligent AI whose goals are even slightly misaligned with ours could cause human extinction for the very same reason that construction workers thoughtlessly wipe out large populations of ants. Let's illustrate this using an infamous thought experiment. Dubbed the most dangerous thought experiment in the world, Rocco's Basilisk is a thought experiment that uses ideas in decision theory to argue that a sufficiently powerful AI would have an incentive to torture anyone who imagined it but didn't work to bring it into existence. This is considered an info hazard because just knowing about the possibility of the basilisk could put you at risk of torture from this hypothetical entity. The argument talks about a super intelligent AI that is tasked with making the world a better place. According to the worldview of this AI, the most moral and appropriate thing we could be doing in our present time is helping create it and accelerating its development, allowing it to get to work as soon as possible. Because people respond to fear and this godlike AI wants to exist as soon as possible, it would be hardwired to hurt people who knew about it but didn't help create it. This now includes you. Most people reject this experiment saying that an AI like that would have no real reason to follow through on its threat since it has nothing to gain from it anymore. However, there are several decision theories that allow one to follow through on a causal threats and promises. In addition, because computers process information much faster than human brains, the world could be manipulated by a superintelligence at rates that would far surpass any human attempt to try and stop it. Simply switching off the machine wouldn't work either for the simple reason that a superintelligent entity would already have thought of this and taken actions to avoid the possibility. There are many arguments against this possibility of dangerous superintelligences and the debate is never ending. 
You can pick sides now and argue strongly either way, but still there is always a chance of it happening. And if it does, there's not much we'll be able to do. When it comes to technological safeguards, there are ways in which you could ensure safety in biotech or nanotech. But AI is the most daunting because intelligence is inherently uncontrollable. And super intelligence? Well, it won't have any reason to stay within our control. The best way to protect yourself from an AI that is much smarter than you is to not get into a situation where it will want to harm you. Except that you now know about Roko's Basilisk and are doing nothing to help create it. So now, if it ever does come into existence, it will target you. So, too late.